Good evening. This is CTV News for Friday, July 31st. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, the controversy over the opening of the District 7 police station continues. County council members say they want it to open on time. However, County Executive Rashern Baker has pushed back the opening date, saying there's no money in the FY16 budget. Byron Scott has the story. Let's get down here. Cut the ribbon for this station. Elected officials and those who want to see the new District 7 police station in Fort Washington open on time gathered across the street from the construction site this morning. Our belief that the resources are there to open the station, they're in the budget. Uh, if, if the county executive would like to have a dialogue about how we do that, we're open to do it, doing that. When the station will open is the subject of a heated debate between county council and the county executive, Rashern Baker, who has delayed the opening, saying council's FY16 budget left him no other choice. Council Chair Mel Franklin says the money is there. So we set aside a total of $25 million in the budget for contingency purposes. So that money is there and can be used to address this issue, this issue or if another emergency comes up during the year. The District 7 station was expected to be up and running before the MGM National Harbor Casino opening next year. But let me say this, I am very disappointed in his actions. But what seemed to rankle some lawmakers is Baker's desire to move some government offices from Upper Marlboro to this site on McCormick Drive in Largo. How do you, I explain to our constituency that you don't have $8 million to finish and staff the District 7 police station while at the same time taking $22 million of money that was not in the budget to buy a building? Residents who turned out for the press conference say this southern portion of the county needs a new police station. If we don't have sufficient police protection and representation in the area, there's going to be, it's going to be very problematic for the casino opening and the people that, in fact, go to the casino. According to council member O.B. Patterson, the building is scheduled to be opened and staffed by the end of August. Of course, that right now is uncertain, and that's why they say they'll keep up the pressure until they get the movement they want and soon. In Fort Washington, Byron Scott, CTV News. And currently there are no talks planned between the council and the executive. It's National Heat Stroke Prevention Day and child advocates want to remind the public that hot cars can kill. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, more than 30 kids in the U.S. lost their lives last year after being left unattended in vehicles. Officials and first responders gathered at the National Harbor today to talk about ways to prevent these tragedies. Heat stroke is one of the leading causes of death among children in the U.S. Already this year, nearly a dozen have lost their lives. We just can't let this happen. We have to get the message out there. More than half of these cases are tragic accidents. It can and does happen to, you know, all kinds of people. Reginald McKinnon knows that even the best parents can unknowingly leave a baby in a car. He did. It was about a 20-25 a minute drive and you know, like most children, you know, she was strapped in a rear-facing seat and, you know, halfway through, um, a, you know, she was, she was out cold, she was sleeping. McKinnon's daughter Peyton died in March 2010. She was 17 months old. Finding my child strapped in her car seat like that, it, it's basically burned in my head. Kate Carr, president of Safe Kids Worldwide, says often parents intentionally leave kids unattended in vehicles. If you see a child alone in a vehicle, call 911. Check the doors. One of them may be unlocked and you could start uh, to get a person out of a car prior to our arrival. Number two, we have tools that allow us to unlock the car. They're a little bit timely to set up and use uh, and they could damage the vehicle, but they are effective. Officials say the temperature inside a locked car can rise 20 degrees in just 10 minutes. Take a look at this thermometer. It's reading the outside temperature as a breezy 79 degrees. Inside the vehicle, it's a sweltering 110 degrees. Prince George's Fire EMS spokesman Mark Brady says the agency is seeing a spike in calls this summer. I think that's because of the, you know, if you see something, say something, people are not afraid to call 911 on somebody. I have, you know, two young children still, so uh, I just, I continue to, to do the things, the act, you know, making sure I'm placing something in the back seat of my car, um, not being distracted if possible. 
safercar.gov slash heat stroke has more information on preventing child heat stroke in vehicles. Hard facts and top tips for parents are also available at safekids.org slash heat stroke. Dimensions Healthcare System votes to replace Laurel Regional Hospital with a new ambulatory care center. The system's board of directors says it plans to reduce inpatient services while constructing a medical facility dedicated to preventative care. The change will cause the elimination of many jobs, although Dimension says it will try to transfer some displaced employees to other facilities. The Baker administration says the loss of the Laurel jobs is very unfortunate. However, the approved changes will help the health care system thrive in the future. The $24 million center is expected to be open by 2018. A day after it was hit with a lawsuit by a man who alleges he was strip searched during a traffic stop by a Laurel policeman, the department denies it ever happened. 50-year-old Alan Sargent says he was pulled over in a parking lot of a CVS in Laurel by Officer Alfie Acol. Sargent says he was strip searched by the officer in the parking lot in full view of passersby. The agency released this statement today saying they, quote, adamantly denied that the victim in this incident was strip searched and his body exposed to public view by our officers. The police emphasized that they never tried to imply there was no wrongdoing, saying that appropriate action was taken against the officer and that the plaintiff's claims are outrageous. A house in Landover goes up in flames. It happened about 11 this morning in the 7200 block of East Forest Road. No injuries are reported. The cause of the blaze has not been released. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Rochelle Metz.